Hello everybody, myself Dr. Arunima Naik, HOD, Department of Chemistry belonging to Graphic Era University. So this is a continuation of our previous lectures and we are dealing with Unit 2A uh, which is uh, the polymers. Now the contents of today's lecture is mechanism of addition polymerization and the focus of our topic is free radical polymerization process. Now, uh, as we have discussed in the previous lecture, addition polymerization is a process in which the polymers are formed via a chain reaction. Now, the most important uh, point uh, uh, in the addition polymerization process is the monomers. That means the monomers involved are unsaturated. That means that there should be a presence of double or a triple bond. Now, this process of uh, addition or adding together of monomers does not involve the loss of any molecules. Now examples under this category are the polyethylene, polypropylene, polystyrene, polyvinyl chloride, teflon etc. So the mechanism how does this addition polymerization proceeds that means what is the mechanism of the addition polymerization and we can see that it is known to proceed in a stepwise fashion by way of reactive intermediates. Now reactive intermediates they are species that are very unstable and they are the ones which are, uh, are which initiate the process of the polymerization process and depending upon the uh, nature of the reactive intermediates that means there are three classes of reactive intermediates one is the free radical the second is the uh, carbocation and the third is the carb anion. So depending upon the nature of the reactive intermediate, the polymerization, the addition polymerization process is classified as the free radical addition polymerization, the anionic or the carb anionic addition polymerization and the third is the cationic or the carbocation addition polymerization. So let us first see this uh, reaction. Here you can see that this is a monomer and this monomer is having a double bond and the Z represents the reactive intermediate and it is also known as the initiating species. So the, this reactive intermediate, it activates the monomers to start the process of polymerization. So you can see that this uh, reactive intermediate, it has added to the uh, monomeric unit and giving rise to a reactive intermediate. So that means this reactive intermediate has given rise to another reactive intermediate and the second monomeric unit starts to add to this uh, uh, this reactive intermediate and this, this is the propagating site. That means this star represents the propagating site. So that means the second monomer will add to the first reactive intermediate via the propagating site and this process of addition that means the third monomeric unit the fourth monomeric unit the fifth monomeric unit the, it goes on adding to the uh, reactive intermediates thus formed and this process repeats n number of times to give rise to a final product that is the polymer and this is the uh, addition polymer talking about the addition polymers the condensation polymers is a different, it follows a different pathway, but the addition polymers proceeds by uh, the uh, chain like fashion and that means it is classified into three as I said, it is classified into three that is the free radical addition polymerization, the anionic or the carb anionic addition polymerization and the third is the cationic or the carbocation addition polymerization depending upon the nature of the reactive intermediate. So that means the uh, depending upon the nature of the reactive intermediate we can propose three mechanisms for the addition polymerization. One is the free radical polymerization, the second is the cationic or the carbocation polymerization. The third is the anionic or the carbonionic polymerization. Now in the free radical polymerization, the initiator is a free radical and the propagatic site of reactivity is a carbon free radical. That means a second free radical is generated uh, in the, by, via the attack of the initiator with the monomer. Second is the 
in the cationic polymerization the initiator is an acid it is an electrophile and the propagating site of reactivity is a carbocation now i under the anionic polymerization the initiator is a nuclear nucleophile that means this is a nucleus loving species the initiator has to be a nucleus loving species and the propagating site of reactivity is a carb anion now in this case the acid is a electrophile that means it is a electro loving species so now before we uh, explain the mechanism uh, of the addition polymerization we should be knowing something about the reactive intermediates now these reactive intermediates the name itself suggests that they are reactive species and the intermediates this name this word suggests that they are existing for a split second so that means the reactant proceeding to form the products so that means there has to be some uh, species which are uh, which exist intermediate in intermediary that means in the middle of the uh, reactant and the products so these are have they, they do not have a their own existence this existence is for only a split second and their work is to uh, activate the the monomeric unit so that means there are three classes of reactive intermediates the first class is the free radical that we will be explaining in this slide so the free radical it is a species in which the carbon atom has three bonds that means the carbon atom it since it is involved in three bonds so that means six electrons are, are there and an unpaired electron also exists in its vacant p orbital so that means the carbon atom in a free radical will have seven electrons now because it is having seven electrons one shot of the octet so the free radical obviously will be a reactive species that means it is highly unstable and how this free radical is formed it is formed from the homolysis of organic molecules in the presence of heat or light now let us see this example here this is the example of a ethane molecule and this is an organic molecule and it is undergoing a homolytic uh, fission that means the, the the breakage of the bond between this methyl radic methyl uh, this methyl and this methyl the bond that is connecting the two methyls is breaking homolytically to give rise to two free radicals now this dot represents a uh, the presence of an extra electron and this is a methyl free radical so that means as i said earlier that th these free radicals are reactive and they are highly unstable because of their incomplete octet and this methyl free radical it has a tetrahedral geometry the carbon atom involved in this free radical is sp3 hybridized so let us look at this diagram here uh, the figure this is the orbital diagram of the methyl uh, free radical you can see that the central carbon atom is involved in three bonds here that means total six electrons are uh, present in this carbon atom and another uh, a single electron is present in the vacant p orbital of this carbon atom so that means that total seven electrons in this methyl free radical and in the carbon atom of the methyl free radical now let us come to the second class of the reactive intermediate that is carbocations now this is a species in which the carbon is again involved in three bonds that means total it is having six electrons but there is a vacant p orbital that means there is no electrons present in this p orbital so the carbocation has a net positive charge and since this is devoid of an octet so this is highly reactive and it is highly unstable now this is formed from the heterolytic fission of organic molecules now let us take this example this is a methyl halide x represents a halogen atom so this molecule will cleave or will break heterolytically to give rise to a methyl carbocation and this is a halide ion now let us look at this uh, uh, this structure of the methyl free radical now you can see that this carbon atom the central carbon atom is involved in three sigma bonds and the uh, there is a net positive charge and this is the orbital diagram of the methyl free radical you can see that this carbon atom the central carbon atom is involved in sp2 hybridization and uh, this there are three 
uh, bonds with the hydrogen atom and this this is a vacant p orbital having no electrons now the third category is the carb anion this is again another reactive species it is highly unstable now let us see why it is unstable so here you can see that this is the uh, the diagram of a methyl carb anion here the central carbon atom is uh, sp3 hybridized and that means that it is involved in uh, three sigma bonds with uh, either the hydrogen or a uh, or a r group that means this is an alkyl group it can be any group and the uh, the fourth sp3 hybrid orbital of this carbon atom it is having a lone pair of electrons so that means how many electrons are there in this central carbon atom since it is involved in three bonds here so that means it will, it will be having uh, six electrons here and plus two lone pairs uh, lone electrons that means total this carbon atom is having a total of eight electrons now you will be asking me the question that when when this carbon atom is having a total octet then why it is a unstable species this is because of the uh, this carb anion is having a net negative charge for this reason it is highly unstable and it is highly reactive species so as i said this carbon atom is sp3 hybridized and the structure of this uh, species it uh, it is pyramidal and it is similar to a ammonia molecule and it is formed by the heterolytic fission of organic molecules like for example a methane will undergo heterolytic cleavage to form a methyl carbonyl and a h plus ion now let us come to the main topic of this uh, lecture that is free radical polymerization so as i said that when the addition polymerization proceeds by the attack of a free radical then we call them as free radical polymerization so the monomer that is being attacked by the free radical it has to have a double or a triple bond now this is this uh, line i have already explained the free radicals are highly reactive and they can contain either one or more unpaired electrons now irrespective of uh, the uh, the reactive intermediate that means whether it is a free radical attack or it is attacked by a carbocation or it is attacked by a carb anion the mechanism of addition polymerization proceeds by three steps that is first is the chain initiation second is the chain propagation and the third is the chain termination so under chain initiation in the free radical polymerization first step is the formation of the free radical as i said earlier that the free radicals are formed by homolytic cleavage of organic molecules so in it can be a this is an example of a di tertiary butyl peroxide so that means this is a di uh, this is the tertiary butyl uh, uh, species and this is the tertiary butyl species and both are joined by two oxygen atoms and this is the structure of a di tertiary butyl peroxide now similarly this uh figure is belonging to benzoyl peroxide that means here you can see that this is a benzoyl group and this is another benzoyl group attacked uh, uh, combined together by two oxygen atoms hence this is a benzoyl peroxide now these two molecules they undergo cleavage either presence of heat or light to give rise to free radicals that means this is a butyl peroxide free radical and this is a benzoyl peroxide free radical and uh, if the reaction of uh, this uh, breakage of bond is taking place in the presence of heat we say it is thermolysis and if it is taking place in the presence of light we say that it is a uh, photolysis process now in the chain propagation the free radical that was formed that attacks a monomeric unit to give rise to another free radical so that means the propagating site is a free radical here now this new free radical will add to additional monomers in a chain like reaction to give rise to further free radicals so this is the chain propagation step now in the chain termination step two uh, similar Uh, uh free radicals or two dissimilar free radicals they combine together to via a covalent bond to give rise to a polymer so this is what we have learnt in this lecture uh, uh 
for uh, the further that is the carbocationic and the carb anionic addition polymerization process will be dealt with in the coming slides thank you